Hey, David Raffoff here. Hope you're having a good day. Um, just wanted to do a quick video on uh, Phoenix channels. Um, it's kind of one of the, I would say, one of the killer features, I guess, in Phoenix. Um, and it's something you might have heard about. Um, it's a pretty neat uh, tool. So um, I, I just wanted to kind of walk you through an example of um, what it does. And then also, um, you know, kind of show you some of the cool um, use cases for it or common use cases for it. And then maybe some even unexpected ones. Um, so, uh, if you think about something kind of like a traditional, um, chat application or even like a collaborative document editing application, like Google docs or something where you can see multiple people doing things at the same time. Um, that's kind of the sweet spot for, uh, Phoenix channels. Um, essentially what it does is it lets you set up, a, a kind of like a pub sub or publisher and subscriber pattern over web sockets. So, uh, essentially, you can you could say, "Hey, I've uh, got this topic, and if anybody's interested in this topic, um, they can listen for uh, events that happen on this topic." And so, say for example, if um, somebody joined a chat room, they would say, "You know, I'm interested in the, this topic about this specific chat room," and when I post a message, I want to broadcast that up to uh, the server, uh, and that'd be done over uh, web sockets uh, with uh, Phoenix channels. And then when it hits the server, the server can say, oh yeah, I, I got something on this new topic. I can, anybody who subscribed, I'm just going to send that out to them and they can pick it up. So, um, you know, so basically as soon as you enter your message, um, that's going to go up to the server and that's going to go out to all the, um, subscribers. And, um, the, the examples that you'll typically see, uh, Chris McCord do who's, um, uh, you know, built Phoenix or been the main, uh, force behind Phoenix, um, he'll do a lot of stuff like chat applications and collaborative docs. And because Elixir or Erlang uh, is so fast underneath it, uh, it's super impressive. You can have like, you know, tens of thousands of people join uh, without any problems. Uh, and the way that they've uh, written it, I guess kind of the other part of the secret sauce is uh, it, it's just fast and it's really easy to put in a place. So it's a very minimal amount of uh, JavaScript that you have to write. Um, and, so, and the code on the Elixir side is also pretty minimal. Um, so enough talking about it. I'll just kind of show you um, uh, something I've used it for here, just as an example. So uh, when this, this is a little charting app I have that just initially it starts with random data from the client side just to render the chart. Uh, but every time this um, randomize button gets clicked here, it's actually um, on the channel saying, hey, I, I want to randomize this data and then it sends it up to the server. The server is going to randomize it. You're going to get it back. Um, and it's super fast. Like it's like microseconds, not, uh, or actually it's like, yeah, I think sub one millisecond. So it's super fast and you can see just like, it, it looks like it's all happening in the client side, right? It's that, it's just that fast. Um, <laughs> and what's cool is uh, I've even done this with like really big, data sets over like a hundred years and it's still pretty much this fast. Um, you can notice a very slight delay when you get the data sets big enough, but I'm not sure if that's on the Elixir Phoenix side or if that's just the, you know, the browser trying to render that much data. Um, so, I mean, this on its own isn't super impressive. It's, you know, it's pretty cool. It's a nice trick. Uh, what makes it really cool is when you see that it's actually synchronizing. So, Here's another um, uh, tab or window, but it could really be any client. Uh, and you can see here, it's got the exact same thing. And if I click this randomize button, both of these are gonna change. So I'll hit this and you can see it's all updating and it's all super, super fast, right? Um, and it's pretty cool. Like if you think of any application you have where you wanna make sure that um, all your clients stay in sync, um, then, you know, it's, it's a really good tool for, um, doing something like that. And there's use cases I keep learning about that are even a little, um, initially seem a little surprising, but they actually make a lot of sense. And I'm, I'm kind of feeling like, uh, a channels and a pub sub arrangement maybe is almost a better default than what we're used to, which is not having any of that. Um, and the reason I say that is if you think about, um, if you, if you think about using like multiple browsers or tabs, um, often you really do want your experience to stay in sync across those. 
So a really interesting one I heard about recently was somebody who's building um, a shopping cart app. And, um, you know, they built it so that as you go through, you add things to your cart and you can change the quantities. And then when you're, you know, ready to uh, check out, you can go on to check out. Uh, just kind of all the normal stuff you'd have with the shopping cart. Uh, but what was really cool was they they did it all using channels. Um, and they were, I guess they were pretty new to Elixir and Phoenix. And it didn't even occur to them that uh, in a shopping experience where you have multiple windows or multiple tabs open, that all of your shopping cart information is going to stay in sync and up to date across all of those. So um, <clears throat> I, I think this is probably common for a lot of people. Like if you're shopping um, and maybe you're comparing a bunch of items or something and you have a bunch of tabs open, um, you know, as you add an item from one tab, when you switch over to another tab, it's going to be there and your total is going to be updated already and you don't have to do anything special. Um, so I really do think there's a lot of um, great, use cases for uh, Phoenix and channels, especially with the speed that it has. Um, the speed lends itself well to doing any kind of like collaborative or real time uh, applications where you have multiple users or multiple um, clients, even if it's the same person. But I also do think for even some of these slower applications, these more traditional things like shopping experiences, um, anything that has like a an ordering flow or a process you're going through, being able to preserve that across all of your tabs or all your browsers or um, you know whatever it is, maybe that, that I haven't experimented with this, but maybe it can be done across you know mobile and uh, desktop as well. It just seems like a really um, kind of like a no-brainer to me. Um, so anyway, I, I just wanted to uh, kind of walk you through what Phoenix Channels is. Um, I'd encourage you if you're playing around with Elixir Phoenix already to just try using it. It's pretty easy to get going. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, hit subscribe and hit the notification bell to make sure uh, you're notified when new videos come out. Uh, also hit that like button, really helps me out. And I'll see you in the next one.